Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to continue our discussion about parallel lines and congruent angles associated with parallel lines. Okay, before we talk about uh, the angles and their association with parallel lines and transversals, let's talk first about the description and diagrams for lines and parallel lines. So when we indicate in a diagram a parallel line, what we do is we mark inside of the segment or the line a, uh, an arrow in a particular direction. So in this case, I can tell that these two lines, A and B, are parallel by the diagrams because I have this indication, this blue arrow in the middle of the line that's common to both the lines. So this tells me that A is parallel, line A is parallel to B. Additionally, we mark a line by taking a segment and drawing these arrows at the end of the segment. That means that this segment runs, or line now, runs in uh, both directions infinitely, to the left and to the right. So I can say that I have two lines, A and B, and I can say in this particular diagram that A is parallel to B because of these blue arrows in the middle of the segment. All right, let's talk about the parallel postulate. Uh, parallel postulate means, or is a postulate that says through a point that's not on a line, so here I have my my line, and I have my point, which I'll call point A, and through a point that's not on the line, uh, there is exactly one line that goes through that point that is parallel to the given line. Right, so if I were to draw a line through A, there is only one line on a plane that's going to be parallel to the line in question, and we'll call this line M here and we'll call this line L here. So there's only one line L that is parallel to line M that goes through point A. That's the parallel postulate. Okay, let's talk about different theorems associated with parallel lines. And these are uh, driven and derived from our prior lesson when we talked about uh, how we proved uh, lines parallel. So remember we started with alternate interior angles we used an indirect proof to show that when we have alternate interior angles that the lines must be parallel, otherwise we would have a, uh, a triangle if the lines were not parallel, uh, which would prove one of the alternate uh, interior angles to be greater than another alternate interior angle. So in this case, <coughs> if we have two parallel lines, we can say that the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. So that means if uh, line A is parallel to line B, then I can say that angle 3, in this case, is congruent to angle 6, and angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. All right, and if you wanted to write this shorthand, and if you're in my class, you would write if parallel lines, then with an arrow, alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, theorem 38. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, any pair of angles are either congruent or supplementary. So we recall that in our discussion about the alternate interior angles in the prior lesson, we ended up with a value of, let's just say x for our alternate interior angle here and here. And we knew that x was going to be supplementary to the angle uh, on the same side of the transversal, but interior to the parallel lines. So we defined this as 180 minus x. We knew that <coughs> this value here uh, on the other side of the transversal, it had a different vertex from the given uh, alternate interior angle, was congruent, so we define this as x as well. And then on the other side of the transversal, same vertex, we define, because this is a straight line A, we define that other angle is 180 minus x. We have a host of vertical angles here. We have uh, angle and vertical angle here, angle, vertical angle here, and then these two vertical angles, and again, these two vertical angles. So as we mark up the diagram, we see that when we have parallel lines, we have a bunch of pairs of congruent angles. Um, and these angles are congruent, or um, if they're adjacent, they're gonna be supplementary. So if I choose any pair of angles, when I have congruent lines, I'm sorry, parallel lines, then I will have either a congruent pair or I'll have a pair that's supplementary to each other. 
All right, theorem 39 says that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, each pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent. So remember, alternate exterior angles are exterior to the parallel lines. Uh, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they don't share the same vertex. So 1 and 8 are exterior angles, 2 and 7 are exterior angles. If I have two parallel lines, then those two angles will be congruent. Theorem 40 says if I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, each pair of corresponding angles are congruent. So uh, we recall from our uh, discussion about uh, corresponding angles, they're on the same side of the transversal. One is exterior to the parallel lines and one is interior to the parallel lines. And they share a different vertex. So 1 and 5 are corresponding angles, 2, 6 are cores corresponding angles, 3 and 7 are corresponding angles, and 4 and 8 are corresponding angles. We have four pairs of corresponding angles. So if I say uh, line A is parallel to B, I know that angle 1 is congruent to 5, angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, angle 4 is congruent to angle 8, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 7. Uh, Move it on. Uh, theorem 41 says that if we have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, each pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. And this just follows from our previous discussion about uh, parallel lines, theorem 38, that any pair of angles is either congruent or supplementary. As we mark up this diagram, we can see the relationship of the angles. So we know that when we're talking about angles on the same side of the transversal, uh, they're going to be supplementary. So x is supplementary to 180 minus x. So I'll mark this up here. I have on the same side of the transversal x and on the same side of the transversal 180 minus x. These two are going to be supplementary. And then again, and then when we take a look at this side of the transversal, the right side of the transversal, uh, oh, now we're talking about uh, these are exterior angles. Well, I'm going to talk about interior angles because there's another theorem that uh, holds true for that. So I have these interior angles on the same side of the transversal that are supplementary. And this also holds true for the exterior angles on the same side of the transversal. So I have uh, this angle here on the same side of the transversal that's exterior, and on the same side of the transversal that's exterior here. These two angles are supplementary. And let's mark this in blue. I have on the same side of the transversal, these two exterior angles are supplementary as well. So I have both the interior angles on the same side of the transversal that are supplementary, and I have also the exterior angles on the same side of the transversal that are supplementary as well. And finally, in theorem 43, in a plane, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, it's going to be perpendicular to the other. So I know that if I have two parallel lines, that the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. So we can see that if I have one angle here uh, that's uh, a right angle, then I know that this line segment is perpendicular to A. I know that it's going to be perpendicular to B as well. And we can think about this because if we have the slope of, let's say this is segment C, the slope of A is going to be the opposite reciprocal to C, and the slope of B is going to be the opposite reciprocal of C, too. So both A and B have slopes which are opposite reciprocals. And if I have these two angles intersecting at right angles, um, I know that they are perpendicular. C is going to be perpendicular to both A and B. OK, last theorem. I was mistaken. There was one more. If two lines are parallel to a third line, then they are parallel to each other. So if B is parallel to A, so I have this marked by the black arrow, and C is parallel to A, then I know that B and C are going to be parallel to each other.